RPV TV presents Studio RPV, the Peninsula's local news show with co-hosts Maria Soreo and Liz Brown Swanson. Hi everyone, welcome to Studio RPV. I am Liz Brown Swanson. And I'm Maria Soreo. Liz, here we are, it's December. Happy holidays everyone out Happy there. Happy holidays. Such a busy month here in RPV. It's always busy here though. I feel the hustle and bustle in the community, I love it. Yes, always fun. And we have um, a new mayor now, Jerry Dehovic. Yes. Big announcement, congratulations to Jerry Dehovic for Absolutely. becoming the next mayor in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Super excited. So this is his second time, is that right? Yes, that's second right. Second time as mayor. So of course, every year in December, we have the annual changing of the guard right. and the city council will reorganize mm -hmm. and so um, he was mayor pro temp this yep. past year in 2018 so now he became the mayor That's right. and of course Susan Brooks stepped down after she was mayor and so and we're she's been so busy Liz, been as mayor she was an incredible mayor yes so uh, let's join our new mayor at Hess Park the night he was selected to become the city's next mayor congratulations mayor Jerry Dehovic here we go again what are you excited about well Liz, thank you very much, by the way. I'm, I'm excited about the whole thing. I think that we have got an excellent council. Uh, I enjoy the job as mayor. I'd, I'd like to give my uh, leadership perspective on this and kind of hopefully direct the council to achieve the goals I enumerated earlier tonight. Number one is to continue to make the city the safest city in LA County and the state, if at all possible. That's job number one. Number two is, as I mentioned also earlier, we have numerous infrastructure issues and I'd like to spearhead that. We finished San Ramon under my first watch and I'd like to see maybe Portuguese Bend get resolved to a significant degree. Everything else we talked about, preserving the nature and, and uh, identity of this city, low cost, low density, semi-rural, et cetera, et cetera. You know, most residents are happy with what's going on in Rancho Palos Verdes and those that aren't, they come forward and, and, and we deal with that. But by and large, everyone's pretty happy. So we want to continue that and make it a very family friendly and resident friendly place to live. It's, it's a great honor to be sitting here now with our Mayor Pro Tem, John Cruikshank. Congratulations on being named Mayor Pro Tem. What was that like for you tonight? Well, I mean, only being on the council for a year, obviously, it's very exciting and very amazing. I think one thing we want to continue to do is not just be reactive to issues. Um, I think we want to continue to be a resident-friendly, business-friendly, um, revenue-neutral or revenue-positive city. Um, all the things that the people here in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes live here for and protect all the things that are of importance to all of us. And a big congratulations again to Jerry Dehovic, our new mayor and mayor pro tem, and uh, continued success for Susan Brooks. She was an amazing mayor, Liz. She is just tireless, that woman. She was. She was everywhere all the time. And one of the uh, last things she did as acting as mayor in our city was mm -hmm. um, back in November, there was a, a monthly beach cleanup. We always have beach cleanups yes. and cleanups in the city. It's volunteers come out. And But this one was really extra special. It was right below Trump National. Right. Um, and in what's called Ocean Trails Preserve. Mm -hmm. And what made it really cool was they had um, a group um, of international visitors and leaders from right. around the world. Now, who were some of the leaders, Liz? So they came from mostly Asian countries. They were dignitaries. They were academics. They were journalists. Wow. Um, some were in elected positions in these countries. And they came through the State Department as part of a special State Department leadership program. And, of course, when they all arrived, uh, Mayor Susan Brooks and Mayor, and community residents were there to greet them. So let's check it out. Welcome to Paradise. <laughs> we are here this morning at the beginning of this preserve, right here at the base of the Trump National Golf Course, and it is absolutely beautiful. It's an opportunity. We have visitors from all over the world, as you pointed out. The State Department has sent us some magnificent people, along with our regular volunteers who come. We've done over, since 2014, we've done many events. Today, they will, this will save the city. Cleaning up this preserve alone will save the city over $1,000. What do you think so far of your visit here in Rancho Palos Verdes, right here? It's uh, excellent. I really find this uh, IVLP program uh, visit very interesting and very rewarding. I've seen a lot. I can learn a lot. 
and uh, especially the interaction with local people, uh, I find it very, very wonderful. And in Vietnam, we also have similar volunteer activities, especially uh, with regard to the environmental protection. This particular program is called the um, IVOP, which stands for International Visitors Leadership Program. And uh, the program has been going on since, 19, since the uh, early 1940s. And it's pretty much to uh, expose um, foreign emerging leaders to the U.S. and their counterparts so that, you know, hopefully one day, you know, they'll, you know, uh, when they become, you know, a leader, whether it's a, a prime minister, president, or corporate leader, or social leader, thought leader, you know, they'll, they'll have a, a better understanding of the U.S. My name's Jason, Jason Young. I'm from... Victoria University of Wellington in New Zealand. So I'm part of the uh, VILP program, run through the State Department, and we're here uh, in the States looking at U.S. foreign policy towards East Asia. Uh, it's a great opportunity to be in L.A. Uh, and to come to this beautiful beach and help out. Why do you think it's important to be here volunteering at the beach? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm from New Zealand, so um, New Zealand's part of the Pacific Ocean. The trash uh, from New Zealand and trash from LA all goes into the Pacific, so we're just doing our bit. Wow, that looks like they had an incredibly beautiful day right here in paradise, as Susan Brooks likes yeah, to call it, it, and cleaned a lot up. It was gorgeous. They got, I mean, a lot of big things like lobster traps, and uh, they moved a lot, and uh, they got a lot learned a lot about our community and it was really special and also I want to do a shout out and a thank you to we have a new intern here at uh, RPV TV and, that's, and her name is familiar to yeah, you. Yeah, it happens to be <laughs> the mayor's daughter Gina Dehovic. Yeah, she's she a Mary job. Star senior and she assisted on the interviews and did a tremendous job she on really that did. shoot and we look forward to having her work with us as yes, part of our welcome RPV Gina. TV team. And that's one it. other thing I want to add is that was a volunteer cleanup. Go on the city's website and you will Good see idea. the opportunities to volunteer right. um, whether it's a beach cleanup and uh, make a difference in their community and that's rpvca.gov. You know what I love the fact that so many people do that all the time it's, it, on a regular basis they help clean up which yeah. is it's take, awesome. It takes so, a village. It does doesn't it? Now we're going our next story. Yes. Very powerful story. Very powerful story because um, you and I every couple of years go to the Power of Pink which uh, is a an event that talks about breast cancer awareness and just what women need to do and, and learn about for their own health and this year Joan London was their former host of Good Morning America, and uh, she had gone through breast cancer and mm -hmm. really shared her story with women, as so many women there do. Um, an amazing time for us, Liz. Just it to, was, it was like you say, it, yeah. it is a powerful wellness conference mm -hmm. for women to learn about their bodies and what's yes. going on with the latest and um, just how to survive. And hearing Joan London's story was incredible. It really was. We had a chance to sit down with her, so let's take a look. The power of pink means empowerment. It means taking charge of women's health and wellness and being an advocate for other women who are going through the struggle. The event brings together, as I said, women and men from the community. We have a boutique that provides shopping. All of our vendors are wonderful. They donate a certain percentage of their profits to our women's wellness campaign. Today, our keynote speaker is Joan London from Good Morning America. We're really, really excited to have her. I think that women today are torn in so many different directions. We live very fast-paced, crazy busy lives. And we're caretakers, I think, by nature. That's how we're wired, and we take care of everybody else. So I'm here to give them the facts, to tell them what I learned through my breast cancer journey that they need to know to be breast aware and to take good care of themselves. And I'm also here to, like, you know, kick them in the tush just a little bit to make sure that they are vigilant about screenings. I wish I would have known that just because you don't have breast cancer in your family doesn't mean that you can't get breast cancer. And I walked around feeling very immune because I didn't have it in my family. Had I known that less than 15% of women diagnosed with breast cancer ever had a family history, I wouldn't have felt so immune. And that feeling can make you be nonchalant. Like, I don't have to do breast exams. I don't always have to worry about getting in there for those screenings because that one in eight, you know, that's going to get breast cancer, that's going to be some other woman. I also wish that I knew that when you go in for a mammogram, that if you have very dense breast tissue, like I do, and like almost 50% of American women do, it shows up white on a mammogram. And that that mammogram may not be a sufficient screening tool. And as soon as I got my diagnosis, I, you know, I realized I've shared every chapter of my life with America, whether I wanted to or not. Here is a chapter where maybe I could actually help. 
I've also worked with a couple of wonderful groups, breastcancer.org, areyoudense.org. That's something that every woman should know about that website, areyoudense.org. You can go to it and look at your state and find out what the laws are and find out if in your state they are required to let you know. And you can also find out if the insurance company is required to pay for that ancillary test. Well, the fact is that statistics have definitely increased. The numbers have gotten greater. And we are not sure how quite to prevent breast cancer. But what we do know with the new imaging modalities available, that we can find it earlier and we can cure it faster. You know, Liz, it was so fun to meet Joan London. I mean, she's been a journalist forever and host of Good Morning America, and she was just so easy to talk to and just so nice. And also very inspirational. Very so inspirational, inspirational, for sure. And just want to remind everyone that that, um, that the proceeds from that event all benefited Little Company of Mary, Providence Little Company of Mary's Medical Center. So That's all it. for a good cause. That's right. And there was also another large gathering of women at the Norris Pavilion, and that was the PV Books and Authors, which is the Women's Club, which is one of the oldest clubs here on the Hill, Liz. Yep, they've done a lot of good work, raising mm -hmm. money to help um, students with scholarships, right. and you got to cover that book fair. Tell us about it. I did. It was so much fun because, first of all, there's so many interesting ladies there that, that love to get together. They're all dressed up, which I love. I love that. It's a beautiful afternoon, and they had five authors that were involved in like crime writing. Some of them were lawyers or in the legal field somehow, and um, it was just, it was totally fascinating. So uh, let's take a listen and hear what they had to say. This is such a fun event. It really brings everybody together. Talk about that. It is, and that's the whole point. Um, it's to learn some interesting facts about how writers become writers and the kind of writing they do. We've had notables and, and uh, famous people over the years, um, but it's a, it's a social activity, and we find our neighbors and newcomers. Uh, when we're advertising in different publications, we get people that didn't know we existed after all this time. So it's an opportunity to see old friends as well as create uh, interest from new people. Well, today we have five authors, um, all doing mystery novels and some are relatively new at it and some are um, well-seasoned uh, mystery writers. Three of our authors have been lawyers in the past and so uh, bring their collective experience from the judicial system and, and how that affects um, mysteries and crime novels. I have uh, about a dozen books but it's about um, a girl who meets someone on Facebook and gets pulled into sex trafficking. She thinks she's talking to another 13-year-old, and that's not, it's actually an adult. I am a lawyer, even though I retired from the practice of law two years ago. But when I was finished law school, my stress reliever was reading, and I loved John Grisham, and I loved reading legal thrillers. And I never, but I never saw anybody in those books who looked like me. So my goal was to have characters who were women, characters who were people of color, and who were the ones running in the court saving the day. This is my first novel, yes. I wrote an explainer about the financial markets a few years ago called Man vs. Markets, but this is my first foray into fiction. Devil's Half Mile is Alexander Hamilton's Wall Street, New York, 1799. We've got a young Irish-American lawyer, Justy Flanagan, who returns to the city after four years at university in Dublin to find out who murdered his father and why. I have written 35 books over the last 33 years. My client was married to an author and I said, oh, I bet I could do that. And my secretary said, well, I dare you. And that's how it all started. And it turned out that my client was married to Daniel Steele and I didn't know who she was. <laughs> So I think I was a little flip way back then, but um, it did inspire me to, to give it a whirl. And now 30 some years later, here I am. Now Liz, I asked some of the authors how long it takes them to write a book. Most of them say a year to two years. Have you ever thought about writing a book? I did at one point think about writing a book. I was going to call it My Cousin Lisa because I grew up with 25 cousins and all the stories Perfect. of growing up in a Greek family in a small town and we all worked in a grocery store. But So stay tuned for that. But yeah. you need to write a book about being in locker rooms. It's <laughs> interesting. I'm not sure I could actually say everything in the book, but uh, you never know. The Diary of a Female Reporter you in the Locker Rooms know. in L.A. <laughs> And you also had a chance to meet with some authors, another event. There's so many authors on this hill. It's it's kind of amazing. I did. Um, at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center, they have an annual Books and Authors Fair. And what's great is that all these authors are right
right here from the community. And yeah. you can get all of the books right at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center gift shop. They're basically marine themed stories, a lot about local history, and not just picking up books in there, lots of cool gifts for the holidays. So you can do all your holiday shopping right there at the gift shop. Time to holiday shop. And you got a chance to check out some shopping at the Peninsula Center Library. I did. They have and a great gift shop. Oh, they have an amazing gift shop. And I actually did spend money there, but you know, it goes for a good cause. So that kind of helps the, uh, the shopping there. Yes. And uh, it was so much fun, but it was during the art show. Okay. They have a community art gathering, right? Yes, they have a community art gathering. And really from, I think they said from like 14, years to 91 or whatever it was anybody can enter it and amazing amazing art an amazing show Ray. Right? so many people came out for this mm -hmm. so it was definitely a lot of fun so uh, let's take a look at that PV is incredibly pleased to be able to host an annual community art show. And when we say community, we really mean it. Anybody on the community can enter this art show. It does have a very, very nominal fee, but people bring in their art. It gets selected by the staff and by um, the director and some of the board members. You can have one, two, possibly three pieces in. Uh, we hang it in the month of November, and then at some point before the holidays, we have an event like tonight, which is basically our awards presentation slash reception. All the artists are invited, their families, their friends, a lot of staff come, the board comes, the friends of the library host a bar, so there's something for everybody. We have a lot of opportunity for artists here. You can actually rent the gallery at Malaga Cove if you want to host your own art show. You can rent the walls out in the foyer of the Peninsula Center Library for your own art show. Schools do that, art groups do that, but this one is is hosted by the library. Multiple artists all participate. It is a juried and judged award, so there are monetary prizes for the first, second, and third place winners. Um, and those will be awarded tonight at our reception. From the school art, from local artisans, from you know anywhere from 14 to 90, you can enter the show. It's fantastic. I am super excited to go check out that art show. This the you need beautiful to. work, contemporary. I saw quilts. It's just phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal. So much fun, that's for sure. That library is, it rocks. That's and it, all I have to say. And it goes through December 31st, so there's plenty of time. Plenty of time. All right. There is more to come here on Studio RPV, including the city's first city manager, Len Wood, will take us down memory lane right here in RPV. Stay with us see on page four that the projections need to be earthquake next Thursday? Seriously? Thursday? Can't do that. Uh-uh. This is really inconvenient. I have yoga that day. I have no time for this. So. I can't do Thursday, but I can do Friday. Disasters don't plan ahead. You can. Talk to your loved ones about how you're going to be ready in an emergency. Don't wait. Communicate. Welcome back to Studio RPV. It is so fantastic to have here in our studio, Len Wood, the very first city manager of the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. Thank you for joining us. Thank How you, are you? Len. Oh, I'm doing a, very a living well. living legend I'm... right here. You are, you are. <laughs> this is really exciting. You know, just recently you were you were named uh, Citizen of the Month at by the uh, outgoing Mayor uh, Susan Brooks. How was that for you? Oh, it was very nice. <laughs> it was not, very nice to come and see in there, everybody. And of course, they they went to they wanted to select you to honor you because of all you've done for our community. You were the city's so first much. city manager. 45 years ago, we incorporated. We've been partying all year, celebrating 45 <laughs> years. What was it like in our PV back then? Uh, when you go back 45 years, uh, when we just incorporated, we had to establish legitimacy as a city. And we had a lot of fighting going on. Mm. The uh, developers were very upset with the fact that the city incorporated, and they had wind that we were going to cut back density considerably. And they were right. <laughs> <laughs> they had uh, density amounts of 70 units per acre along the coastline. And the city came in right away, and we put a moratorium mm -hmm. on development. Give us time to develop a general plan. And so I was hired as the first city manager, and I had several jobs, but probably the most important was setting up a city organization, hiring the right people, right. because it takes a certain type of person to work in a new city. Huh? You have no structure. 
So people have to work without that structure and yet create it. And at the same time, the public expects you to carry through with uh, all the uh, regular functions of the city. Mm -hmm. So those are a couple of things. I think the thing that was probably most important to me was setting up the financial structure. Mm -hmm. The city of uh, Rancho Palos Verdes was not a wealthy city. We, mm -hmm. we had an incorporation study that said you could only have an 18 cent per 100 tax rate. Uh, when you compare that to other cities, which were something like a dollar per 100. Oh, it's very low. Uh, very low. Mm -hmm. So we had to do certain things. And, and the things like uh, developing high reserves, uh, uh, we started that then. And the idea that we would uh, have a pay-as-you-go capital improvements program. Mm -hmm. Instead of bonding for funds, we would, uh, for uh, improvements, we would uh, accumulate funds and then put the improvements in. And the city is in very good fiscal shape today, 45 years later. You're a resident. You live here with your wife, June, who you yes. met when you were working at City Hall 45 plus years ago. You right? got a really good deal there. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, I, when I told the council we had gotten married, and I went to him and I said, I, I have good news and I have bad news. <laughs> the we're good news was I'm married. The bad news is I married the city's key financial person. Right. <laughs> so we so she is going to one. have to leave. <laughs> well, yeah. she got the memento yeah. going back to finances, exactly. right, to keep us on the right track. And, yeah. and you, like, you live in this community. Are you happy where the way RPV is today? What do you see as our challenges, too? Well, I'm very happy with the city. I think we've got an you know, outstanding uh, council, and we have an outstanding city manager. You right now, you are working on a project to help uh, keep us all informed and preserve the history of Rancho Palos Verdes. So tell us about your book project yes. and what you're doing. Yes. Uh, first of all, I'm doing it with Carolyn Petra, who, oh. who was uh, assistant city manager for, for many years. several, several yes. years. Yeah. And so I'm very pleased to work with her. We're going back into the archives. I collected a lot of articles and photos myself. And uh, Carolyn has all this knowledge that Oh, yeah. And afterwards. Great. Yes. And so now we're working with a library. Monique is being very helpful. She's got mm -hmm. um, a lot of nice archives. And she's lent us scanners to scan this. Oh, nice. Put it in a book. Uh, we're putting photographs, articles, all the history. Mm -hmm. And the uh, we see all the uh, issues in terms of development. At one point, we had $200 million dollars in lawsuits against the city wow. on planning. That's how, you know, this thing was uh, really, um, it was dicey for a while because yeah. we only had a 1.3 million general fund. Oh boy. We would have lost one, one lawsuit, we would have been out of business. Yeah. <laughs> so that's amazing. And so this it is all is. gonna come out in the book. What's your timeline? When are we yeah. gonna be able to pick up a copy? Uh, you know, <laughs> we, we, fortunately, we, we don't have a deadline like yes, some of my other books. Nice. This is, but I, I figure if we can do it in a year or two. Then. Well, thank you for sharing. We're yes. going to have you come back in and keep us updated on your project. And thanks for serving our community so well. Yes. Oh, well, thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Ren. All right. Well, there's still a lot more coming up here on Studio RPV. And guess what? We're going to get baking with an amazing great-grandmother who just so happens to be Maria Sorrell's mama. Don't go away. Welcome back to Studio RPV. This time of year, there's so many great traditions. Many and great traditions. One fabulous tradition here in the peninsula is the annual Palos Verdes Marathon that just took place in November. That's right. It was unbelievable. And guess who was there? I think Susan Brooks. Of course she was there. Does she sleep ever, no. Liz? Yeah, she was I there. Think got, so. She got to get the race going. But she you know, did. 
for, for decades now, this uh, annual marathon was put on by the Kiwanis Club, mm -hmm. and it continues to be what's one of the oldest continuous running marathons in the country when it first started back in the 60s. And then in the year 2014, Maria, it evolved into a half marathon, 10K and 5K, and it's called Lace Up Palace Verdes. This year, there were some 1,700 participants. I was just going to ask you, how many people yeah, were there? Yeah, yeah. And they all took part in this athletic event. It kicks off now right above the Terranea Resort okay. um, on PV Drive South. And like you said, our former mayor, Susan Brooks, was there. That's right. She had the honor of starting the races. And the fun thing was she got to warm up the runners. She was like doing a crazy aerobics out there, getting everyone, getting the runners going. And once they kicked off, they got to run along our beautiful RPV coastline. Not a bad place to no, have to do a run. super picturesque marathon. It has a reputation for that of just being beautiful, as well as one of the most challenging races in the nation because it's so hilly. And in fact, the event has sold out now for like the past three years. It's great. And the weather was absolutely perfect. Participants got to take in all the gorgeous views, and relax by the ocean after crossing the finish line. I think relaxing by the ocean is a good part of that. What a way to cross the finish line. <laughs> it's great. And we're almost finished here with the show, but almost? we've saved our best story for last. That and that's because Maria's mother is in our next story. Yes. Yes, she is. My mom is in the house for the next story. In fact, um, my mom bakes, of course, so many amazing things at the holidays. And we had to kind of like, I had to find something simple that we could actually do. And um, we did that. So let's take a look. Well, hi, everyone. We are here today in my mom's kitchen in Vacaville, California. And we want to show you a very easy, fun, delicious recipe that we make every year at the holidays, and it is chocolate Philly candy, or maybe it's Italian fudge, I don't know, but we make it every year and it's very good. Now, this is Charlotte, my great niece. Her mom, Gina, is gonna come and help us in a little while. And my mom, Mary, mom, how long have we been making this candy? Oh, it's been a long time. Everyone's liked it every year That's that right. we've made it. Now, Charlotte, how many ingredients do we need for this? We need four main ingredients. And then we need a couple extras at the end, yes? Yes. Let's list off the ingredients you're going to need first. The first one is? Two eight ounces packages of cream cheese. Okay. The next one is four cups of powdered sugar. Okay. Five ounces of melted chocolate. The last one is a half a teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, and then we're gonna use cherries and some nuts, some chocolate jimmies and some coconut later, but these are the four main ingredients and um, we're gonna get cracking, so let's do it. Are you ready? We're ready. Okay, it's time to melt the chocolate. So the chocolate we are going to be using is Baker's Dark Chocolate, but I recommend using any other chocolate you want, but I like using this one. Okay, as you can see, all of the chocolate has melted and now we're gonna let it rest and cool for a few minutes. So we have to remember that we need to have two packages of cream cheese to put into the bowl. We like to recommend to use regular cream cheese more than low-fat cream cheese. Because cre this cream cheese tastes better. We're going to first beat the cream cheese and get it go together, and then we'll add the, the powdered sugar. So now we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract into our batter. So now that our melted chocolate is all cooled off, we are going to add it into our cream cheese mixture. So now that our mixture is all complete, we're going to put it in the refrigerator for about an hour to chill. Now that the mixture is ready to begin um, rolling our balls, we are each going to grab a teaspoon and start rolling them. How much fun like, is this? You do it on the backs of your yeah. palms. There you go. Like that. There you go. Okay. Get a little rhythm going. Get the hang. Good mom, that's great. Now, as you can see, we are done, and we are all going to take a bite, and this is so delicious, so easy to make. You can even make some and put them in these cute little boxes like we did. Gina, you've got the other ones over there we can just put inside, and people would love to receive this. They are wonderful, and it's time to take a bite. So, everybody, thank you so much, Gina, Mom, Charlotte. Merry Christmas out there. Merry Christmas. Take a bite. Take a bite, Mom. Mm, mm, mm. Delicious. Mm. 
really good. Very good. Mm. Very, very good. You'll love it. That was priceless. Your so family is adorable. Your mother's amazing. And I think your niece, Charlotte, she wants our jobs in television. <laughs> and you know what? She takes directions so well. It was a little scary, honestly. She's fantastic. We were talking about traditions and things like that. And here at RPV TV, um, when you bake something or make something, you absolutely must take a bite. Let's take a These bite. Let's take a bite. So Liz, coconut nuts or with a little chocolate sprinkle. So dig I'm, in. I'm going Liz coconut. Liz is taking a bite. I'm so what do you call these again? I know so let's just say Italian fudge because we call it so many names and honestly, it's just so oh good. God. So delicious. Wow. Very easy. Good? You said do refrigerate these. Yeah. And thank you about for it. You're very being welcome. Such a sweet friend <laughs> and coworker. All very right. Good. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Studio RPV. I am Liz Brown Swanson. I'm Maria Soreo. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs>